the Sokcho submarine incident, 1998. In the 1990s, the life of a sea fisherman in South Korea, where its fishing industry had been booming since the 1950s, was a relatively simple one. One of its most popular catches at the time was the eel-like beltfish, and seemingly the only threat to the fishermen's peaceful existence was the constant ongoing disputes with the Chinese authorities over fishing rights in the region. A recently developed scheme implemented by the South Korean government was beginning to worry many of the local fishing boat owners. This scheme was aimed at streamlining the fishing industry and making it more efficient, and had already led to 618 fishing vessels being scrapped. Then one day in the summer of 1998, near the South Korean port of Sokcho, a commercial fishing trawler crew had the biggest catch of their lives, a 110-ton midget submarine. It was, in fact, a North Korean Yugo-class midget submarine that had snuck over the maritime border between North and South Korea and had now become entangled in the trawler's fishing nets, forcing the submarine to surface. The fishermen watched as the submarine crew managed to cut away the netting and began to sail north, but before long it came to a standstill and just floated helplessly on the surface as its engine had stalled and stopped running. They reported the incident over their radio to the authorities, who dispatched some anti-submarine helicopters to the area, who confirmed its location. South Korean Navy's surface ship soon surrounded the stricken vessel and at first tried to communicate with it by radio. And when that failed to get a response, they used loudspeakers and even tried tapping on the outside of the hull. As it was practically impossible to board the submarine at sea, they fastened it with a long rope to one of the Pohang-class combat corvettes at the scene, ROKS Gunsan, which towed it to the port of Tonghe. The South Korean Navy had only two years before captured a North Korean Shark Sang-O class submarine that had run aground in South Korean territorial waters while on a spying mission. This captured submarine is now on public display in the South Korean Unification Park in Gangnong, where visitors can go on board the vessel through special hatches that have been cut into the side of the hull. As for the captured Yugo-class midget submarine, while it was being towed into the harbor at the naval base at the port of Tonghe, it mysteriously sank in 100 feet or 30 meters of water, taking all of its crew down with it. It wasn't known if it sank because of mechanical failure or the crew had deliberately scuttled their own vessel. The next day, on June 23rd, the North Korean authorities issued an official press release saying that the submarine had been lost at sea in a tragic training accident. Two days later, on June 25th, the South Korean Navy managed to salvage the 66-foot or 20-meter-long submarine out of the water. After cutting a hole into the hull, they were horrified to find nine dead bodies inside, four of which were North Korean Special Forces operatives, and the other five were submariners of the North Korean People's Navy. All of the Special Forces team had apparently committed suicide, but before they did, they had executed the sailors, presumably to stop them from being interrogated and revealing any important secrets. North Korean military edict dictates that any personnel should kill themselves rather than be captured by the enemy. So this order would have been carried out without any hesitation by the Special Forces men, who would have also made sure that the submariners were also dispatched with them. A logbook found on board the vessel showed that the submarine had infiltrated into South Korean territorial waters many times before, and there was evidence that when it got entangled in the fishermen's nets, it was returning from yet another espionage mission in the South. Also found inside were a number of AK-47s, machine guns, grenades, pistols, a rocket-propelled grenade launcher, and some South Korean drinks, as well as a 1995 issue of Life magazine. The bodies of the submarine crew were buried in a cemetery in Paju that was reserved for North Korean and Chinese soldiers and referred to as the Enemy Cemetery. North Korea refused to accept the bodies of those killed in the South as they claimed sovereignty over the whole of Korea. Therefore, the fallen were already buried on Korean soil. Hey, would you choose a sang o class submarine or a mighty medieval castle to do battle with? Watch your step. Idle Siege is a medieval-inspired strategy game that puts you in the role of a siege overseer. This fantastic war game will put you through strategic decision-making attacks to conquer castles while giving you resources for each level. Find the perfect siege strategy by combining your commanders and troops to penetrate the enemy's defenses. Your forces will continue attacking even while you're asleep. 
Turn the tides of a battle in your favor by unlocking epic warriors such as Napoleon, Leonidas, and Genghis Khan. Besides the main quests, fight iconic villains like Demon Balthazar and the Dead Druid in engaging time-limited events to win more gold and commander cards. Enter battles in stylish handcrafted levels including ruthless lands of taiga, bone-dry sunny deserts, and scenic medieval forests, which make a nice change from the vast ocean. And use your hard-earned gold and scrolls to complete quests, upgrade troops, commanders, and siege camps. And with a sea fight unit arriving soon, I'm looking forward to getting those marine reinforcements. Join us in Idle Siege available on the Apple and Google Play stores and become an ultimate siege overseer with stress-free relaxing gameplay. Click the link below to get 240 gems. All you need to do is reach the fourth level of the game and claim the reward. Over the next decade, there were several further incidents at sea between the two Koreas. By far the most serious and deadly one occurred on the evening of the 26th of March 2010, when the small corvette warship ROKS Cheonan was hit and sunk by a torpedo when sailing near the maritime border between North and South Korea in the Yellow Sea. This explosion resulted in the death of 46 and the wounding of 58 of the Cheonan's crew of 104, meaning the ship suffered a horrific 100% casualty rate. Also, one of the team's divers died while searching for survivors in the rescue mission during the adverse weather conditions. Remains of the torpedo were found at the scene by rescue divers and identified as belonging to a Type CHT-02D torpedo, which were manufactured by the North Koreans. This type of torpedo doesn't actually hit its target, but detonates a short distance from it, which in this case was just below the ship's gas turbine room, causing a bubble and jet explosion which effectively forces a pillar of water up to 100 meters in the air. The high-pressure shockwave can smash a one-meter hole into a ship and can physically break a small craft in half. The subsequent South Korean inquiry concluded that the Cheonan was sunk by an unidentified North Korean midget submarine. This view was supported by experts from the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and Sweden. But this report was firmly rejected by the North Korean and Chinese governments. The Russian Navy also carried out their own separate investigation, but declined to ever make its findings public. Currently, it's estimated that the North Korean People's Navy has around 70 to 80 diesel submarines, including quite a few Soviet designs from the 1960s and 70s. Most of these can only fire torpedoes or lay mines. In that fleet are around 20 midget submarines, half of which are of the Yono class, and these first started to enter North Korean service as far back as 1965. Worryingly, over the last few years, they've been developing submarine-launched nuclear missiles, as well as larger and more capable attack submarines to carry them in. One of these is the Sinpo-class ballistic submarine, which is much larger than a midget submarine, at around 223 feet or 65 meters long, with a crew of between 70 and 80 but it only carries one missile which launches vertically out of its conning tower. This submarine is tiny compared to the U.S. Navy's Ohio-class submarines, which are 560 feet or 170 meters long and carry a payload of 24 Trident II missiles. In response to all of this, South Korea has recently invested heavily in upgrading and expanding its anti-submarine warfare ability. One of these countermeasures is the new Daegu-class guided missile frigate, of which eight ships were initially planned, with a final goal of 20 to 22 in the future. With a crew of 140, they're equipped with the latest electronic warfare technology, which includes advanced sonar equipment for detecting submarines and torpedoes.